I'm Thomas Morgan. I had come across the mountain several years ago with my family. Got me a fine piece of land on the very edge of the settlement down on the Nolichucky. And I had served in the militia under Colonel John Severe for several years campaigning against the Cherokee. But at this time, things had died down and things was quite peaceful. Spent most of my time working the crops, hunting. But we had all heard about the British coming south and raising an army of loyalists to march north. And I gotta tell you, I think all of us was hoping that they would march north of us, go through Virginia, and leave us alone. But in our hearts, we knew it wasn't gonna happen. We knew that some of the men from over here in the settlements from up on the Holston, different places had been crossing the mountain, joined some of the Patriots taking a stand for their cause. And we all knew that sooner or later, they'd call us up because I had heard that one of the British officers, a man by the name of Patrick Ferguson, had sent a threat across the mountains to the settlements. So we knew it was just a matter of time before they called us all up and we'd have to take a stand. We knew our chances would be slim because they were the most powerful army in the world. I'm Major Patrick Ferguson, commander of the Southern Loyalist Battalions. We began our invasion of the South in 1780 by taking the, town, the city of Charlestown in May. After that, we had 5,000 continental prisoners under the command of Major Benjamin Lincoln. Before the campaign continued, our Commander-in-Chief, Sir Henry Clinton, put me in charge as the Inspector of the Loyalist Militia in the South. We continued our invasion of South Carolina, and on May 29th, a unhonorable man known as Lieutenant Colonel Bannister Tarleton cut down surrendering Virginia Continentals at the Wax Halls. He should have let them surrender as a gentleman would. After that, we continued our invasion to South Carolina. Our commander here in the South, Lord Cornwallis, set up supply depots all through South Carolina at Camden, Winsboro in 96. Before we continued our invasion of, into North Carolina, we engaged the Continentals under Major General Horatio Gates at the Battle of Camden and defeated them. After that, Cornwallis decided to invade North Carolina. He sent me into the backcountry to deal with the hornet's nest of a rebellion, as he called it, where men like Isaac Shelby and Joseph McDowell were engaging in battles where they would hit and run and atta attack our men instead of fighting in a line like gentlemen. So Cornwallis gave me the orders to go into the backcountry and get rid of these forces. In August, also in August of 1780, you had the Battle of Musgrove's Mill, where McDowell and Shelby did engage a Loyalist force coming to join my main Loyalist column. We lost the battle, but captured a young man from South Carolina named Sam Phillips. We decided to interrogate him and find out where exactly these forces were coming from, and he told us the Ulra Mountain settlements near the Watauga and Appalachian, near the Watauga River in the Appalachian Mountains. So I gave him an ultimatum to give to the backcountry settlers. I told him to tell Shelby and McDowell that if they did not desist from their opposition to the British arms, I would march my army over the mountains, hang their leaders, and they waste their country with fire and sword. Now we march toward these forces. I don't think it will take much to defeat them. 